So starting with the supplies needed, we're going to have a sienna type kit, a cylinder to measure the chemistry in, a bowl to mix it in, a cheap sponge brush to use, a piece of felt fabric, and most importantly, gloves. First we're going to measure out our chemistry. This is solution A, and I'm using about 20 milliliters. Then we're going to measure out solution B and you wanna mix equal amounts of both solution A and B. Then we're gonna mix them together in this container. Now it doesn't look like a lot of liquid, but it's actually way more than we need for just one print. You could probably do about six prints with this amount. I'm gonna use our little sponge brush here to go ahead and mix the chemistry together. Now that we've mixed our chemistry, we're going to apply it to this piece of watercolor paper. You want to keep in mind, this is light sensitive chemicals. So we want to do this in subdued lighting, but because I'm trying to record it, I have my bathroom door cracked a little. Now this is watercolor paper. You want to use a material that can handle liquids, such as canvas, fabric, watercolor paper, or even mixed media paper. Now in effort to make sure that we don't have any gaps in the chemistry that we're applying, you wanna apply it in a horizontal and a vertical motion, covering all areas of the paper. Next, we're gonna take a piece of felt fabric so that we can go ahead and pull up any extra liquid that's on the paper, and this will help speed up the drying time. If you choose to leave the liquid on, you'll just get a darker print. So it's all about aesthetic. And for drying, I'm just using a handheld dryer on cool. You could also just sit the print in a dark area and wait for it to air dry. Before exposing the paper to the light, you want to lay out the objects you're using to make sure you get the look you're aiming for. As you will see here, I end up taking out that red flower once I place the paper in the contact frame. As soon as the paper is exposed to light, you can see that it starts changing from yellow to green to a bluish tinge. Now how long you're gonna leave it out in the sun is all dependent upon what time of day it is and what your overall look is that you're aiming for. Here I exposed it for roughly 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes are up, you will need to wash the print. I first start with the five minute wash using slightly cold water. As the chemistry washes off, you will see the cyan color appear. In addition to the first print, I also exposed another image for double the time so that you can see how exposure time affects the overall image. Now the second image is drastically overexposed and there's very little cyan color showing. It's important to make sure that you have the water running during the wash. You want the print to be agitated by the water. After the five minute wash, you can use a little bleach to alter the photo. It's supposed to intensify the photo, but I didn't find that to be the case once the image dried down. If you do choose to use bleach, you only want to keep the print in for five to 10 seconds and make sure you're agitating as well.
Now you want to wash the print a second time. I'll run this wash for roughly 15 minutes. Again, we're using slightly cold water and you want to remember to agitate the tray. Now that the wash is done, you can lay the paper out to dry or hang dry it. I'm going to hang dry the paper, but also use a hand dryer for a minute. In a future video, I'll make a sienna type using a transparent negative. So here is our final product. As you can see, it's a pretty simple process. So now it's your turn, go give it a try.